Ah, what a wonderful time to be using the Unity game engine. Before I get to work, I want to check out some game dev news on Twitter. Don't judge me. Five months ago, Unity introduced a new runtime fee, requiring creators to pay per game install after reaching a certain revenue threshold. This change upset a couple people, and they started trying other engines. I was one of these people. With what was going on, I didn't feel comfortable with using Unity for the time being. Fortunately, and by total coincidence, a game jam named the Jump Ship Jam, organized by fellow game dev YouTubers Baji and Polymars, was starting. Participants were challenged to create a game in an engine they never used before. Now I need to pick the engine I'll be trying. Hmm. Of course! Roblox Studio! I'm kidding. I'll be doing Godot like everyone else. In this video, I'll show my experiences with Godot and review if I'm going to switch or not. Stick around to find out! But anyways, let's, let's go. go. Of course, the first thing I gotta do is download Godot, which might take some time, so I'll just wait. Never mind, that was very fast. Well then, time to finish setting up. I'm going to keep using C Sharp for Godot because they support it, and it's way better than GD Script, which is basically just Python. And Python bad. If you don't agree with me, you can tell me in the comments why. I just won't care. Now I was going to use Visual Studio to do the coding for the game, but Godot wasn't behaving and didn't want to work with it. So I had to go with VS Code and the C Sharp extension, which works perfectly, except for when it doesn't, which is very often. I'm going to like this so much! Now since this is going to be the first time I use the engine, I'll make a practice project just to get to know some of Godot's features. I'm not going to bore you with all the details, because I want this video to be short, and I'm already 4 months late to this... trend. So here's a funny time lapse of me struggling to use Godot at all. So after a lot of errors, in tutorials, I learned about 5 er, uh, 4 things in Godot. Inputs, physics, text slash UI, and saving and loading. Now I'm definitely ready to make a game in Godot. The theme for the jam was strength in numbers, and I almost immediately came up with an idea. Gambling simulator! Woo! Yeah, baby! What do you mean I can't talk about gambling? Have you seen the stats for this channel? Like half the people here are middle-aged men! Okay, fine. I'll make it YouTube friendly. Uh, Pinball! You guys remember Pinball, right? Oh, you don't? So I thought, how about you get money every time the ball hits a peg? And you can use that money to buy more balls. To get more money, to buy more balls, to get more money, to buy more balls, to get more money, to get more balls, to buy blah, 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 blah. I started by making the game window vertical. Oh, so you're making a mobile game? Nuh-uh. But that's going to look terrible on desktop. Exactly. I don't think you get what I'm saying. Now the most important thing I need to do is have the physics work properly. So I think I just make this a rigid body and... Oh. oh, I forgot to add bounds. Perfect. I added a couple more pegs and the ball still worked as expected. I then needed to make some UI that would show how much money you have, which was very easy. Now before I continue, I just want to give a quick update since not many of you are going to watch the end of this video. Here's a little time for how long this will last. I promise it won't be long. So recently, I haven't been doing much with my other social media accounts, so I decided to dedicate each one to a certain type of post. On the community tab, there will be channel updates and other similar stuff having to do with this channel. On Twitter, there will be random posts and reactions to current events. 
Lastly, on Instagram, there will be more frequent updates on games I'm working on. So just follow the ones with the types of posts you want to see. And that's it. Back to the video. At this point, which definitely wasn't a week since I last worked on the game, I made a list of things to add to the game, which was a lot. So I'm going to speed run through all of these features. Let's, Let's go. go! First off, I need to change these sprites, because they do not look good. So I went ahead and borrowed some of Kenny's UI sprites, and now it looks a bit better. I then made the pegs arrange themselves in the grid to make it look nicer, and not to have any of the balls get stuck. Thank god for CodeMonkey's grid system tutorial, because without it, I wouldn't have been able to make the grid. I made it so that you can place pegs onto the grid. This took a couple tries, but I got it working eventually. So far, I've been spawning balls with some debug script that would do it on click. But I want the balls to spawn automatically. So I used some trig to make the spawn point smoothly move left to right and then spawn a ball every couple seconds. Is it shop time? I think it's shop time. I made a shop that will let you buy balls and pegs and tell you how many of each you have. Now I don't want the price to stay constant. So I crafted some mathematical equations that would increase the price of each item by the correct amount and have that amount decrease over time. <coughs> Sorry, where was I? Oh yeah. So I added the math, and now it will get harder to buy balls and pegs as time goes on. This is the only way I can make the game harder, so it better work. Now how much time do I have left? TWO DAYS! Uh, 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 multiply it! You can buy it in the shop to get more money per bounce, but balls and pegs get more expensive. Uh, uh, you can now see how much money you have in the shop. Uh, oh god, there's only 24 hours left. <sighs> I need to calm down. Okay, I'm ready. I made new sprites for everything in the game, and now it looks decently good. I also made a sliding animation for the shop when it is opened or closed. Now there is one main problem left in the game. There are no sounds! So I opened up FL Studio and created this masterpiece in like 30 minutes. I also made some sound effects for the game, but Godot for some reason doesn't want to play them and the music at the same time. So sadly, you won't be able to hear my amazing sound effects. Now it is time to export my game to the web for people to play. Let me just... What? Really? I can't export to web with Godot 4 while using C Sharp? How could I have known that? Oh. So you can only play the game on PC or Mac. Don't blame me, blame Godot. Well, that was an experience alright. In the end, I placed 51st, and people seem to enjoy the game, which is all that really matters. Now, time to enter the question from the beginning. How was Godot? Well, Godot was fun to use. With how small it was compared to other game engines, it was easy to set up and to start making games with. With its simple UI and abundant resources, it was easy to get the hang of any new features. I even recently used it again to make another game for a history project. Don't ask how. And that time, I used GDScript. It was actually really easy to use, and it made the game their process even faster. With that, I'm still going to be using Unity for one main reason. Personal preference. Since I've used Unity for over two years, I understand its workflow enough to easily make any game I want. Switching to Godot would not only mean learning a new game engine, but also unlearning my previous workflow. And that doesn't seem like fun. So I'll be sticking with Unity, but occasionally use Godot for quick games that I might come up with in the future. Hope you're okay with that. Now. On to the topic I wanted to discuss most, the future of this channel. You might have noticed that my upload schedule recently was... non-existent. Due to outside responsibilities, I was not able to work as much on the channel as I would like to, which explains some of the inaccurate times earlier in this video. I would like to change that though. I have been able to get some more time to dedicate to this channel, and I would like that to signify something important. This video will be the final video in Chapter 1 of the Low Budget Game Dev channel. After this point, expect to see some more frequent, maybe better, videos on this channel. I would also like to thank everyone who subscribed, played my games, and watched these videos. 
it tells me that what I'm doing brings joy to people and I want to continue to bring that kind of content to those people. So on that note, thank you and see you next time.